practice three. Um, you know, first day in shoulder pads, we call them shells. You know, I thought today we were a, a little sloppy, uh, which is to be expected when you first put pads on. Um, I didn't think we came out with the type of energy and the effort that we showed the first two practices. So for us, something we got to coach us, coach our players through. Um, we did get some good work in. I do feel like uh, we're continuing to do our installs with all three phases and our players, again, have been very willing. Mm -hmm. uh, they've bought into a lot of the things and all the different things and changes we've made. So I've been pleased with that, but uh, definitely have to learn how to come out and start fast and practice uh, on a consistent basis mm -hmm. with the energy that that you want from your team. So we got to do a better job of that. NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know-how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on-prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. Coach, the other day we asked you about the O-line. How do you see the D-line retooling and re, um, you know, filling in a lot of spots? You lost at graduation. What have you seen there overall? Well, I mean, I think we've got uh, decent depth there right now. And, um, you know, we got the right kind of bodies. I like our length. I like our size. Um, they've been able to put, add some strength uh, with the off-season program. Um, so, you know, I think what we've got to do is it'll be an inexperienced group when you lose the type of experience we lost last year. So uh, anytime you have an inexperienced group, that's where the fundamentals are going to be really, really important. And, uh, again, that's what the spring is for, uh, is to get the fundamental of the position taught. And, you know, Delbert's doing a good job of, of implementing and teaching how we want to play up front. In, ter in terms of you being an offensive guy, how – these three days for you, how have you been splitting your time? How much, how much are you going over the defense? Are you sticking over at offense? No, I mean, you know, doing the individual periods, that's where I tend to roam a little bit to, to kind of go and watch how some of the other positions are uh, are working. I'll spend the brunt of my time with the quarterbacks and then on the offensive field. We watch all the practice stuff together, so that's where I usually get the defensive side of what we're doing and how we're doing it, and that's where all the corrections kind of made are made by me. Um, so doing practice, I spend the brunt of my time dealing with the offense as I should. Um, and then when we meet as a staff to watch the practice, that's where I really uh, ask the questions I need to get answered for the defensive side of the ball. Come. When it comes to cleaning up some of the sloppiness that you were talking about, holding players accountable, I'd assume that you know, you're, you're also looking to some of the players from the other class and on the team to help step up in those leadership roles. I know the last regime, I think, had uh, like a leadership council or something like that. Are you starting to put together – you know, something similar to that or, or formulate who the leaders on this team are and have you spoken to anyone in particular or anything to, about stepping up into that role? That's like a 30-minute question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 29. So here's where, here's where we are. Obviously, as I like to tell our team, uh, coach-driven teams are good teams, but player-driven teams are usually your great ones. And, um, you know, obviously we want to have our leadership come from within. Now, as a new staff coming in, we're trying to evaluate – who our leaders are, and, and it started in our off-season training and conditioning program where we're starting to see guys, and, and basically for us, leadership is your ability to affect others in a positive way. And so we're looking for guys within our team that can affect their teammates in a positive way, and there are some guys that are starting to jump out. Um, we will have a leadership uh, committee on our team. they will be the voice of our team. We're nowhere close to being able to, to determine who those guys are because we're going to get through the summer conditioning, or we'll get through the spring ball, we got through the winter conditioning, and then by the time we start our summer program, uh, we'll start putting together a list of the guys, and it doesn't matter if it's freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or seniors, we're gonna put a list of about 11, 12, 13 guys that we feel positive, positively affect the others on the team, and, and that'll be our group that we call our leadership committee. And I know a little while back, you know, there's the Jordan McNair fundraiser at Chipotle, and you paid for a lot of you know, students' meals. Why was that something important, you know, for you to do and, you know, show this community? Well, one, it was something to honor one of our own, um, Jordan, and obviously being a leader of this family, um, you lead by example. And obviously I'm huge with our players and in involving themselves in this community. Uh, you know, as football players and as college athletes, 
we're given so much and we ask so much of our community to come support us. And here was an opportunity for us to support not just uh, Jordan, but also the community and for Chipotle there, right there on Route 1 to, to open up the doors and, and, and do what they did to raise money and awareness for Jordan McNair. Of course, I would be a part of it. He was one of our own and as the leader of the family, I needed to be there and it's the right thing to do. When, when you're looking at the group of players, you have a lot of them have been through two, three position coaches. Um, what do you guys do as a staff to try to ease that transition when they're going through that again? And how much do the previous relationships help, whether that's with you or Coach Brooks in that regard? Um, you know, what we've tried to do from the day we got here is develop uh, real relationships with our players. Uh, when you create a family environment, it, it, it's it's about spending time and quality time, not, a, not necessarily how much, but the quality time. and. You know, over the course since we've taken, uh, since we've gotten here, and since our players returned from the winter break, we've had team dinners where our players eat with our players, our coaches eat with our players every night. Uh, you know, we're we've got coaches assigned to be mentors for other positions. Um, we're doing everything we can to develop the relationships and and have the the bond that you need to have. Number one, as a family, but also for our players to feel that com uh, that comfort of knowing. First of all, they know when you care, they'll, they'll bust their tail for you. So all right, we got a bunch of great coaches that are serving as mentors, not just teaching them on the field, but off the field. Our players responded really well. Did it help for, for you that you maybe knew some of these kids through recruiting? And, you know, yeah, I, the fact that I have some um, skin in the game from having sat in a bunch of these guys' homes as, as the recruiting coach uh, prior, uh, I think helps because the relationship was already established. Uh, but obviously with me being in a different role now I've had to have some of the assistants take on that position coach recruiting coach role and I've got to kind of uh, be the big picture and, and see it all. Coach your favorite question after three practices <clears throat> Dustin's favorite question too any guys jumping out any guys who took the winter conditioning to the spring that you said wow that guy's taking the next step? Yeah it's until I watch the tape tonight it's so tough I mean each practice, we try to identify some guys that have done some things well. I know um, today on the offensive side of ball um, in meetings from practice two, TJ Bradley was a guy that had a pretty good practice, practice two. Jay Sean Jones had a pretty good practice on the offensive side, just having sat in that meeting. But until we really watched the tape, I thought today was a, a overall sloppy uh, practice for us. As I told our team, um, you know, they came out kind of with that attitude of we have to practice instead of we get to practice. And, and, and you can't come out with that mentality. So we'll work on correcting that part of it. Um, we did have some good learning and teaching, and there'll, there'll be some good things on tape for us to teach off of. You mentioned spending time with the quarterbacks today. Uh, that run was obviously not complete. Uh, can you mention uh, there was a new player in the group today, and can you mention how that group is coming along? Um, yeah, we added a walk-on um, to the quarterback room just from a depth standpoint. Um, you know, I think Scotty has done a tremendous job with installing what we are going to run on offense, some base stuff. We're, we're, today, I think we're, got, we're into install number three, which is a pretty big install. For every practice, we continue to push the uh, envelope of adding new concepts and new teaching. But I feel like that room has done a good job of doing all the extra stuff um, outside of the teaching time where they are coming in on their own, spending a lot of time uh, learning the system, studying the system. And, you know, obviously still like any other position, we got a lot of work to do. We still got uh, a lot of things to get corrected. But I like the way that they've approached uh, being students of the game. How long does it take in general to be a student of the game on the uh, learning side versus the field time? What's the breakdown? I mean, you'd like it to transfer over immediately. You'd like to see guys take things from the meeting room mm -hmm. and have the ability to execute it on the field. Um, you know, obviously that's not always the case, but for us, that's what we strive to get. And then what we do is we continue to fix and correct as we meet. Mm -hmm. You know, the one of the things we've done is we set practices up to be able to go Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, so that we have <clears throat> teaching days in between to be able to make some of those corrections and hopefully by the time we get on the field the next time we get some of the mistakes corrected. And you mentioned that, you know, you weren't exactly seeing the effort that you wanted to today and that, you know, maybe guys, you know, didn't want to, you know, practice on a Saturday and things like that. How do you, as a coach, you know, motivate those players and really, you know, get them wanting to go hard in practice? Well, I mean, it has to start from within first and foremost, but one, we demand it. 
Um, you know, we draw the line in the sand for the standard in which we need to practice uh, as an organization. And um, if that standard's not being met, we're going to make sure we show it to them. We're going to make sure we talk them through it. We're going to coach them through it. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, hopefully we get some leadership like I talked about from within where the players uh, around each other are able to affect the others to get them to practice to the standard that we set. How does the health of the team after the first week? You know, thin in numbers, but I, I think our guys have uh, really fought through. You know, we've done a lot of two spotting where guys are getting a lot of work and a lot of reps. And, um, you know, there's some residual effect when you two spot and you don't have the numbers that we'd like to get to. But um, with the first three installs being so heavy, it really helps our guys to get the, the physical reps, not just the mental reps. So, um, you know, we'll evaluate where we are after we get off the field and get a, fit, get a feel for where we are, injury, how our legs recover and then kind of determine how we want to practice moving forward. Time for one or two more. Uh, could you just uh, identify the walk on as well? It's Donnie yeah. Sanders. Donnie Sanders. Thank you. Is he uh, a uh, five-star unit, three-star? Where is he from? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's a uh, school walk on. We had a tryout oh, okay. and came out for the mm -hmm. team. Had some depth. Do you see any others? Oh, he was the only one. Did, did you get a chance to watch the Maryland basketball game? Of course. Well, uh, both of them? Of course. Uh, any comments on, on uh, the great spirit we had down there in Jacksonville last weekend? Uh, again, I, I love the, the, the effort. Um, you know, Coach has a, a, a young squad that I thought really fought hard. You know, I thought they exhausted a lot of energy in their comeback and mm -hmm. weren't able to finish. But as I found out, you know, when you have a team like that and they get to that point, uh, the learning from being able to make the tournament, get to the second round of it, uh, will benefit them in the future. So hats off to Coach Turge and basketball for the season they had. Are you playing in Tory Smith's charity game today in Baltimore? I won't be able to make that one. Are you and Charles Barkley, similar games? <laughs> I won't be able to make that one. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Thanks. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast.